As a web developer, I know it's challenging to stand out and delight your users. However, you can use rich, animated content to showcase a great design or to give users amazing visual feedback to keep their eyes focused. I'm Sam from Google Developers. Here are the three modern approaches to animation, declarative, imperative, and procedural. If you'd like to follow along at home, be sure to check out the description to find the source code to the demos. Let's dive in. First, let's talk about CSS animations. These are really common. More than half of all web pages loaded by Chrome users include them. They're a type of declarative programming, as you describe what you'd like to see and let the browser take care of getting you there. Simple effects like fades, highlights, or other transitions can be achieved by setting the transition property. Any matching style change will be animated with the timing you specified. If you've never animated on the web before, try it out with a striking background color or dismiss effect. You can also specify CSS keyframes, which let you describe a number of steps. You'll have to specify everything up front, but this lets you encapsulate more complicated effects. The Web Animations API is the standards-based approach to imperative animation on the web. And don't just take my word for it. Ask the W3C. This API provides powerful primitives. And we refer to this as imperative programming, as you'll use these real JavaScript objects directly as part of your site's code. You can also get started really easily with the element of animate call. By specifying a few steps, you'll get back an animation object, which lets you control an animation as it plays, maybe by pausing, rewinding, or listening to its finish event. Rather than specifying simple steps, you can also build effect objects. These are either a list of keyframes or a group of other effects. These primitives let you compose more complicated scenes in any way you see fit. Remember, because they are, these are real JavaScript objects, they're perfect for when you're engineering rich, object-oriented web applications, because they let you properly encapsulate your animation logic. Lastly, there is procedural animation. This is actually a type of imperative animation, but refers to animating step by step. On the web, you can use the request animation frame method to be called whenever your browser is ready to draw your next step. As a bonus, when the browser is hidden, your code won't be called at all. This gives you full control, which could be useful when you're drawing into a HTML canvas, which is pretty common for browser-based games. However, you'll want to keep your code short. You'll be responsible for orchestrating an entire scene. So if it takes too long, your user's experience could suffer. Phew, that was a lot to cover. If you're still confused about which approach to choose, let's recap. For simple effects like fade, highlight, or transform, try out CSS animations and the transition keyword. If you're building a web application or want to encapsulate something complex, try the Web Animations API. Finally, if you want full control, use Request Animation Frame to get called whenever your browser is ready to go. I'll even mention that this year's Google I.O. website uses a little bit of all three. And sometimes that's right, too. Find out more using these resources. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Sam Thorogood for Google Developers.